I decided, you know what? I made a little bit of a name on myself with the HUD and decided that with all this footage, maybe I could hook up with the Depps company. Got a friend of mine to help represent me. We met Matt Pano, who's the importer and represents Depps here. He goes, let me have the videos and I'll send them to Depps. Okay, and that was, that was it. And he goes, uh, what do you think also about Depp's colors? And I said, well, I, I like the carp and I like some of the other colors. I said, but the trout sucks. And they go, well, what do you mean it sucks? And I says, well, it's sort of fluorescent. And, and I told him, I said, this is the bait that I made out of your trout. And I want one like this. And he goes, well, what would you call that? And I said, I call it a flash trout. This was the very first one I ever made. This is called a lot, a lot of big fish. And I took off the paint and airbrushed it myself with some taxidermy. And it's not the greatest paint job in the world, but it, at the time, it was this was gold. He said, okay, well, you know, if they okay it, then maybe we can make the butch brown color. They sent him the videos. And I got a call about a week later. And they said, sign him up, give him whatever he wants. And then it went from creating colors in butch brown colors to representing all the colors they make and bull shooters and things like that. And then I realized these things really sell. And the reason they sell is because at the time there was a couple of swim bait websites and I got on there and I told them, I said, I'm gonna show you a double digit Teener Bass, a new one every night, live cast and catch for the next two weeks on this bait right here. And I did that when we had already ordered the first flash trout. And then it seemed like I got in contact from the website telling me that every night there's like 7,000 people waiting to see these next video you're going to put out. And it just exploded from there. It, the word got out. You couldn't even keep the baits on the shelf. Still to this day, when they come in, they're pretty much sold immediately. As far as uh, the new colors, like butch brown colors and and things like that. And I try to create three colors, maybe four colors a year. And one would be what would be winter, spring, summer, and fall. Well, when we get into our fall, you know, I stick with the trout patterns because you can't go wrong with trout. They come in all different shapes, sizes, and colors. There's brown ones, there's black ones, there's purplish looking ones, spots, there's everything. You can't go wrong. I try to match something, you know, uh, that I see. I go to the hatchery that's just not far from my house and, and look at what pictures I have of these summer neon, summer sandy color. So then I create a color there and then one of our popular colors is flash trout or stalker trout, and then we might go back to that one for the winter time, which is around January, um, unless I decide to do something a little different. And then as it gets into the summer and spring, then we go with like a different carp color maybe, or a bluegill pattern. They've changed a little over the year, but years, but uh, I don't see any difference in the action or anything. Some people like the old, some people like the new, most people can't tell the difference, you know, but they're still buying them, so they still work, and as far as I'm concerned, they swim just as good as the other ones. The new baits, you can feel it has a vibration in the water, so it uh, makes it a little bit more attractive. These two baits right here aren't on the market yet. I get to fish these. I don't know if you'll get to uh, see them on the market before you see me on this video or not, but these two baits are swim bait underground. It's their own color. They're golden shiner. This one's the, what I would call a clear golden shiner, and this one has a matte finish. You know, if, if I had my choice, I'd probably fish the matte finish right here more in the murkier water, and if I was to fish in the clearer water and Actually, I'd probably fish them each for whatever, but just as a rule of thumb, that's where I'd start off. But that's their clearer color right here. They're beautiful. They thought it out really good. I mean, I'm, I'm super impressed with it. 
and this bait will be coming out, uh, you know, soon. I'm not too sure of the dates because I sort of don't pay attention to that stuff, but it's, we're in February right now, so I'd imagine in about a month or two they'll be, they'll be hitting the market. They'll be here for springtime, that's for sure. But uh, I get to go fish these baits, and these are the first two that I've ever got. So if you see me post a picture, it means I've caught them between February and the time that you're going to see this video, or the time that they're released. It's a Depth 250. It's a Golden Shiner. You can only get them at one place. These aren't going to be in the tackle shops. You're not going to get them in places like that. You won't get them from me. You have to get them straight from the shop at Swimbait Underground. And that you know they have their own form, their own site, and, and then they got the 175s right here, which is definitely the smaller version. Smallmouth lead them. You know, it's like if I go to Pyramid or if I go to Castaic, and I I'm looking up, and there's the moon, and I'm looking for big fish. I'm, I don't target the big fish because I already know over all the years I've been fishing that I don't get bit when the moon is visible to me in the daytime by giant fish. I mean, 98% of what I catch, I look at in the sky, and I've been doing it for 30 years, and I, I just know, and I go with the percentage. You know, what what has worked for me? So if I just want to go have fun and enjoy myself, well, then I'll throw the 175, and I catch the small mouth on it, I catch the large mouth. You know, I really haven't caught, I haven't caught a 10 pounder on it. I've caught seven pounders and stuff, but it, uh, and the small stripers and stuff, they eat the crap out of it, but you know, it's definitely a fish catcher. And a lot of our lakes don't have trout and don't have giant bass in them in Florida. So it's definitely a, you know, something, something for them to have. Believe it or not, I fish it on usually 12 pound mono, not floral. Cause I found that with floral, unless I'm into the 20 pound range, that when I have that bait on and I'm making those hot casts and repetitious and I'm slapping it in the water, it, uh, it, it, it tends to break, you know, that doesn't take that explosive action. So I stick with the mono on stuff like this because P line or max, you know, uh, eyes or the green, it, uh, it works just fine. It doesn't snap off. You know, I still retie every hour or so, or you know, I'll pull it when I travel. But I fish it on 12 pound, I don't fish it on 15. If you fish it on a little bit lighter line, you get a lot more action out of it, and you'll get a lot more bites. When I fish on the 250, like this one, let me put it this way, I've never fished 20 pound, or I have never even, I've never put 25 pound line on my rod for bass or 30 or 40 and I only fish 20 pound with this. Nothing lighter, nothing heavier. I fish Seaguar Brazex fluorocarbon. It's the only line for me, whether it's a HUD, whether it's this bait, period. Okay, it takes the explosive action, it sinks with the bait so you're more, it's the, the line's not up here floating. Like if you're gonna throw your braid and then you have your little leader here, you know, you don't have to wait for that, that line to all catch up. The, the, the floral sinks with the bait, so you're more direct when you start swimming it. It has a little less stretch, lasts longer on the reel, so financially, economically, whatever cost-wise, it's about the same because I can fish almost every day for at least a week to 10 days till I keep biting off too much line with the floral. Versus if I go and fish mono, I replace that line every morning, period. Because it stretches and it gets memory and it's curly. But as soon as you start fishing the floral, it, it just gets wet and it, it just it, it stays out there and it's it stays straight. And if you in the swim baiting world, because it's so popular now and our lakes are small, and even the bigger lakes in California are considered small, well they're they're heavily hit. So you gotta keep everything in line. You know, you gotta be as stealthy as you can because the fish that's down there that you're looking for is a double digit or bigger in California. Well, they've seen everything growing up. You know, their eyes are this big. You know, they see it all. So you can only imagine how many lures they've seen swimming where it's swimming along like this and the hooks are hanging down. 
And to me, that, that looks like a cartoon picture. That's why when I fish the Gamagatsu hook, it's a lighter wire hook. So when I slow my retrieve down, the hook tucks under the bait, you know, like this. Okay, so now I got this bronze hook hanging down. It's a lot less detectable than what you see here. And if you fish a black hook, well, it even stands out even more. But the bronze hooks don't, they don't contrast so much with everything. They blend into the water column a lot better, in my opinion, okay? I'm not, I don't have the answers for everything and every solution and stuff like that. All I can tell you about is what I've learned over all the years of fishing.